Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges, joining us today. Double Tokyo Olympic champion in the 100, 200 backstroke, gold medalist in the 400 medley relay. Today, we have the pleasure of sitting down with Kaylee McEwen. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me on. Great to have you back on. Great to uh, <clears throat> talk to you after your Olympic performances. Um, really excited to break those down. How are you doing today? What's what's going on in there in your last couple months since Tokyo? Yeah, so obviously straight off the back of competition, Australia has quite strict COVID um, rules and regulations, so we went straight into a two week lockdown, which was kind of nice in a way to just relax and you know, kind of process what had happened in the past few weeks leading up to the Olympics and then actually the Olympics itself. So, yeah, it was nice to relax, do a few media, press, all that kind of stuff, get it out of the way. So when I got home, I could actually enjoy myself, see my friends, my family. So started back in the pool maybe two and a bit weeks ago, three weeks now. Okay. Yeah. yeah so, so you've been out for quite a while. How do you spend your, your downtime or your out of your pool time? Um, so I've been, like I said before, I've, I've been seeing a lot of friends catching up with people I haven't seen in a long time, but, you know, um, took a few days up at the beach, took my car for driving, that kind of thing. As I mentioned in my last podcast, I think, um, yeah, just trying to stay away, away from the pool, but, you know, we still have really nice beaches and whatnot in Queensland, Australia. So hit them up as much as I could too. <laughs> do you, getting back into swimming right now, how do you feel about competing training i mean do you feel ready to kind of get back into it are you like oh let's go um what's your mindset like right now it's definitely so hard i've never taken this much time off before but it was well needed um but it's interesting coming back because you feel so unfit and you're like how did i go from like my best ever peak performances to like straight back down here in a space of like two months it's absolutely wild but you know it is i'm really excited to get back in and you know find a new program and fix up a few injuries that I (laughs) carried through the Olympics. So yeah, just looking at slowly building back in, don't want to disrupt anything too much. Yeah. What, what, uh, what injuries were you dealing with during the Olympics? Um, so I only found out maybe two weeks ago, I, um, tore the back of my labrum in my shoulder. I did it in our staging camp in Cairns. So just before the Olympics, I was in the gym and, you know, popped it out behind my head and I didn't realize. So I had a pain, had a fair bit of pain for two, three days afterwards. And then, you know, then went to the Olympics and it was fine. And so the last two days I was like, nope, something's not right. Um, in quarantine, I was in quite a bit of pain too. So as soon as I got out, went and got an MRI and yeah, sure enough, did a little bit of damage. <laughs> so, so for the last two days in Tokyo, you were, how, how did you deal with that pain? Oh, I mean, I couldn't do anything about it. Um, the best they could do was give me anti inflams And, you know, I took one, I was like, no, nah, that's not doing anything. So I was just like, I just got to put up with it, do the best I can. I've only got two races left. So yeah. <laughs> Those two races being the two back final and the medley relay final. Yeah, they, Is that yeah, correct? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So pretty, pretty big ones, but you know, as sometimes athletes, we just get dealt the worst cards sometimes. And that wasn't the worst card I've been dealt, but yeah, it was definitely unlucky. Uh, it seems it seems like you dealt with it okay what yeah yeah I mean how, how in the moment um did, are you able to process that at all how do you how how do you let it sink in and be like okay gotta move forward yeah I mean I've never had an injury like this before so I'd, I'm not gonna lie I'm a little bit scared but I've got a really good team um doctors and physios massage therapists all around me so I have no doubt that using the guidelines that they're giving me, I'll be back and running (laughs) as per usual. So yeah, just trying not to stress too much um, with the midst of everything else that's going on. Right. You've got a lot going on right now. Um, So are you able to train where, what does training look like at the moment for you? Does the injury tamper a lot of what you can do in the pool? Um, 
It does. I actually got a cortisone this Wednesday. So I'm off the shoulders up until next week. Um, Mm. But yeah, I've been swimming on it lightly and just, you know, sitting around four, four and a half K and not trying to push it too much because, you know, it is early season and, you know, I'd rather have an injury that lasts two months and an injury that lasts six months. So just taking it day by day. Gotcha. And and so then, um, like you said, you're kind of hopping around clubs right now. Your, your longtime coach, Chris Mooney moved to bond university. And so you were up there training with him, kind of testing the waters. And then you're also, you also trained with Michael bowl, uh, for, for a little bit. Can you tell us about those experiences? Yeah. So, um, I finished off the Olympics and my coach told me the tough news that he was moving to the Gold Coast, which is actually two hours away from where we, well, where I was training at USC. So it's a whole completely different vibe down here. It's very much city-like, busy. You know, I'm used to more relaxed, chilled, beachy vibes. So um, it's definitely been a lot different. I, I trained with Chris um, for one and a bit weeks. Um, and, you know, I actually trained one session with Bolly. It wasn't even planned. And I was like, you know, I really like it here. Like it's a really good high performance environment, even though it is a big squad, like everyone's just so welcoming. And I was like, oh, I might stay here a week. And two weeks later, I'm still there. So quite, quite enjoying it. Um, But next week, I'm actually going to Dean Boxall in Brisbane and then back to the sunny coast to hopefully see the new coach that will be at USC. Wow. So you're just, you're, you're taking the grand tour of Brisbane. Yeah. 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 I've already been out of home for like three weeks. So just carrying around a suitcase. (laughs) What, what went into that decision? I mean, that, that seems obviously, you know, switching coaches after having so much success with Chris is a big decision. How did you make that decision? Who did you talk to, to kind of decide, okay, let's try all these different groups. Cause I, I don't feel like most people take that approach. Yeah. Um, obviously when I got told the news, I was pretty upset. Um, but I kind of saw it as, you know, either this is time for me to move out of my comfort zone and move to the Gold Coast or, you know, either trial around at different clubs. And I'd rather give myself more options and see what else is out there because I've never trained without Mooney. So, um, you know, I I am looking for a little bit of change as well. And that's the whole reason why he moved from the Sunshine Coast down to Bond was for a change in his personal life. So, you know, if he's going to do that as well, I think, I kind of deserve the right to have a little bit of a joy around and just, yeah, have some fun and see what programs I like and suit will suit me for the future. Do you have, have you put a timeline on yourself of when you want to make that decision? Um, in my head, I have, I haven't really voiced out, but I would love to know where I will be for the next, you know, either if it's six months leading into the world champs prep or Commonwealth games prep, um, with the club or, you know, if it's going to be a three year thing. Do you have an idea of what you think you'll like or what you're looking for? Um, I don't want an age group program. Um, I want to be training alongside people who, you know, are striving to make that Swimming Australia team or, you know, want to be an Emma McKean, you know, win an Olympic gold, go to world championship championships and be really successful. I want to, you know, really have a good environment. And that is a lot to ask for, but I think Australia has a lot of depth in swimming and we have a lot of great athletes. So the programs that I have kind of chosen to go around to um, have that environment. And so far, I'm, yeah, Bolly's quite good. <laughs> are there specific, obviously we, we talked about the coaches a little bit. Are there specific athletes, you know, you train well with on the Australian team? Um. Well, when we go away for our staging camps, it's kind of you're in your own little group. Um, I've always been with my coach, so I haven't had an opportunity to really race against any other guys. Like, obviously, I race against Molly O'Callaghan and MC Bomb just in, you know, <laughs> Australian races. So right. um, I'm not sure what C Bomb's doing, but she is at the Griffith Pool, and I've kind of been like, oh, would it be okay? And she's like, yeah, it'd be great for me. Um, so, yeah, it's, not, it's nice to feel welcomed by people who you race. Yeah, absolutely. I, I've made, especially, uh, it, obviously you're now a two-time gold medalist, but it, you know, Emily Seabom, pretty legendary backstroker. Oh, yeah. So that, <laughs> that must be a cool feeling. Yeah. A hundred percent. Um, she's been around for as long as I can remember. So to be able to train with someone who I've idolized for so long would be pretty cool. Yeah. 
So, so you, you got a big decision. I'm also curious just as to how, you know, with, with, uh, with Australians, you guys have world champs in May and then yeah. calm games, August. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so how do you manage to, you know, two of the biggest meets of the year in like th- within a three month time span? Have you thought about that at all? It is going to be a huge year next year. Um, I haven't really thought about it too much because obviously I haven't got a coach to kind of sit down and decide what we're going to do. But there's been a few ideas that have been thrown around, like the Com Games team might be a bit of a B team and the A team is going to be a world champs team. So um, I try to get myself onto whatever benchmark meet Australia is going to label. And I think that's going to be our world champs. Um, I love swimming at a world champs too. It's, it's almost like an Olympics, but it doesn't happen every four years. It's still the same you know competitiveness and you got the guys from the US and Canada so yeah it's pretty cool um yeah I'd love to make both teams ideally and I think Swimming Australia has talked about basing the athletes who make the world's team and want to go to com games in Europe somewhere that's don't don't take my word for that but I've heard ideas about that gosh that 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 seems like it'd be a pretty good deal (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it would be a fair chunk away from home, but I mean, you're young, why not travel while you can? <laughs> yeah, uh, so so you would you would want to go to both, ideally. Yeah, I mean, with the injury as well, I've just got to play it by ear and see how things go. But, you know, I, I'm so competitive. I'd love to be on any team I can get myself on to. Has, has seen your compatriots race at like World Cup or ISL gotten those juices going at all for you? Yeah, hundred percent. I like, I really wish I had gone over there, but it's kind of a blessing in disguise. I came home because I've, I've got all this time now to figure out where I'm going to be training and whatnot. So hopefully soon, maybe in December I'll race. I'm not too sure yet. Um, but definitely early next year, I'll be back in and racing. Nice. Well, I know I'm certainly excited to see you, uh, the, the, but this is all great news. This is all really exciting to hear. Let's talk about a couple months ago. Uh, the, obviously Australia had a pretty wild, <laughs> wild camp staging camp experience just with, um, having oh, yeah. to, you know, <laughs> escape to cans. What, what was your experience like after, after making the team, um, getting to camp? Yeah. So fortunately, um, I was Mooney's only, Chris Mooney's only athlete. So we kind of tagged on with the St. Peter's West Indian Box, Ariane Titmus, Mitch Lark and that, that group. Um, and we actually went to a staging camp a week earlier prior to everyone else, um, just purely for hot weather because, you know, Japan's quite warm and humid. So we got out of um, Sunshine Coast quite early on and then the rest of the team joined us a week later. But <laughs> a lot of people who were in Townsville had to scramble out because of all the COVID cases and whatnot. So we were really lucky and fortunate that we decided to go that week early. I, I spoke with Chris within the, the past few weeks, I think, yeah. a month or so. Um, and he was telling me about that time when uh, when when you guys trained with uh, Dean and, and his athletes as well. He was like, we would just sit back after practice every day and like, did we just see that? Like, this is, this is amazing. He said, you know, he, he said it went really well. Was there a workout or, or something that stood out to you about that camp? I think, um, obviously it being Olympics, no one wants to go underprepared. So we're all just going as hard as we could, no matter what it was. And I like, I never got to see them sitting on the side of the pool, kind of reflecting on what had happened, but us as athletes, I think just the whole camaraderie and just the Australian vibes. I don't know if it was able to be seen on television or whatnot, but we were really close knit. And I think just the support and love that we shared with one another, it just boosted the whole environment and made us all want to be better athletes. I mean, I don't know if you could see it on TV, but certainly, you know, just from, from how you all performed, it seemed like something was, was, was different. Something was elevated. Um, and, and you've been on international teams for Australia before you've been to world champs, you've been to, uh, summer youth Olympics. I mean, you've, you've, you've traveled a lot with them. Um, was, was it, was it a few people that made this team different? Was it, uh, what do you feel like really set this team apart? 
I think just the transition from Jarko, our head coach, through to Rowan, there was a lot of communication between the both of them and what they would like to see the future of Swimming Australia. And I think they've done a really good job of involving their athletes and not just making it, you know, staff and athletes. They kind of merged us all together to make us feel as one and they treated us like adults, which is really nice. It's not like you can't, can't do this, you can't do that. Like they're just like, do what you need to do. We're here to help you. Um, and then obviously just the environment of there was a scene that was used throughout the team. It was like, you know, we've got your back. Um, and it's kind of just saying no matter the results, no matter the outcome, you're still a good person. You're still here representing Australia. We're not disappointed in you. And I think that just took a lot of weight off a lot of people's shoulders. And I know mine as well, because I do get worked up in all the media and that kind of thing. That's why I like to kind of fly under the radar for a little bit. Um, not talked to a lot of media before olympics and all that kind of stuff so no it, it was really good yeah so, so speaking of which um you know you had an amazing trials you set the world record in the 100 backstroke uh you you go pbs in, in the i'm sorry I, you you were right on in the two back you go huge yeah, pb yeah. in the two i am uh <laughs> do were you were you feeling the pressure were you feeling worked up um heading into tokyo I think I was more nervous to get onto that Olympic team because it's every, well, I don't know if it's every athlete's goal, but it was definitely one of mine to be an Olympian. So that first event of our trials was my hundred backstroke and, you know, the adrenaline was pumping. I was like, I just want to get going. Like, I just want to go. And I think that's what actually pushed me that little bit further is, you know, I was so motivated and just trained so hard. I was like, I just want to get onto that team. And, you know, it was such a relief looking at the board and not only seeing the world record, but being like, I've just reached one of my all-time dreams. <laughs> that that is a really really cool thing, really special. Did, I mean, was the rest of the meat kind of gravy after that, or or were you still like, okay, I still have to do it in the other events too? Yeah, well, Rudy actually come up to me um, the day after, and he's like, "Do you realize what you've done?" And I was like, "Yeah, but like, I still got two other events. I've got a race. I can't like be all like, excited about that." And he's like, "No, that's good. That's good." Keep it like that. <laughs> yeah, I think he was just, you know, riding that wave still where I was like, no, I've got the turn it I am the next day. I need to relax. I need to do what I've got to do. That's, that's I feel like that shows a lot of maturity when your coach is still, is still kind of excited and you're like, yeah. dude, I got I got to move on to the next one. I can't, yeah, it was funny because he kind of just reversed out. He was like, all right, <laughs> leave me. <laughs> that is pretty great. Um, yeah. So, so you make all three events, um, you get to Tokyo, man, that, that hunter back final and for, as a member of the media, we really hyped it up and it like hundred percent fully delivered. <laughs> I mean, it was just one of the most exciting races of the entire meet. Can you tell me about the final from your perspective? I think the heats was just insane within itself. You know, I think it was, um, Regan, the Olympic record and then Kylie and then myself. And it was just one after the other within the space of like 10 minutes. And I was like, did that really just happen? <laughs> so I knew going into the semis and then into the finals, I had to be smart and kind of save my energy a little bit. So I didn't want to be walking out lane four anyways. That was not a plan, but it worked in my favor because I do get quite stressed. And I was like, at least if I'm, you know, lane three or like six kind of thing, I can take my time and I'm still in a good spot in the pool. Um, but it's so strange, like walking out to not a huge crowd when it's an Olympic Games. I mean, us Australians, we're kind of used to it. So it was it was just a different atmosphere because when you go international, you you expect to have that big crowd. And because it was so it's such a huge complex, the small amount of athletes that were in the stands, it kind of echoed and it made it all that little bit more eerie but cool. And I was like, oh, this is this is this is this is it. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think just. I just put up my curtains and I, Mooney asked me, he was like, Oh, I had that race feel. I was like, I could not tell you. I was like, all I know is my last 15 was painful, but everything else, like, it's just amazing what your body does in situations like that. Like you've done all the training. And I honestly, as soon as a starter went, I just was like pilot mode kind of thing. You, you've done it so much. You just, you know what you've kind of got to do. Yeah. Did, did um, I mean, walking out, you, you just described how it felt, but you've, been in other international finals was was this one 
significantly different, obviously, like you said, the echoing, the, the, the lack of crowd. Um, but could you feel a palpable difference of like, you know, world champs versus Olympics? I think even without the hype of, you know, the external environment, you still have that hype within yourself. You're like, I'm at an Olympic games. This is the best that you're ever going to get. So that pressure within yourself still rouses you up enough to get up behind the blocks and want to do your best. Yeah. So then, you know, after the hundred back, you, you, you win gold. Um, did you know that you had the 200 back? Like, did you know you're going to win the 200 back after the hundred back? You're like, Oh, it's, no. it's in the bag. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. I was actually, um, the week of the Olympics, I kind of felt like, you know, when you feel slow in the water and I was like, man, I was like, if this was a week ago, I would have been fine. Like I, I did a really good, um, few student training sessions, you know, fifties and that kind of thing. I was like, Oh, I'm on here. And then the next week I was like, done it. But you know, I didn't let that get to me too much. And especially when it got to the turn back, cause obviously it goes hundred, 200. Um, so you got to, you got to conserve your energy. And like I said, I just switched off after the hundred and tried to calm myself down and get ready for that event. So I, I, by all means, I had no idea I was going to win that event either. It, it's such a tough field. You never know who's going to get their hand on the wall first, especially on Olympics. Did, uh, so after winning the hundred back, did that give you a boost of confidence? Did that give you more pressure to win the two back? Um, how, what do you feel like you gained after that hundred win? Um, oh, that's actually a really tough one. Cause I feel like it put more pressure on myself. Um, there was a few people who was like, Oh, do you reckon you can do the double? And I was like, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> yeah. I was like, it's kind of a big ass. So regardless, I was pretty amazed by my hundred swim and I was going to be happy either way. Um, so then the 200, the 200 I am, obviously you didn't swim it. Um, what went into that decision of, yeah. of having, having such a great one at trials and then ultimately saying, I'm going to focus on the two back. Yeah, it was quite hard. Cause I am, I actually really love swimming that event. Um, and I think, oh, I can't remember what I was either swimming down or warming up and I could see the final and I was like, Oh man, what do I do to be able to be in that race uh, alongside those girls? But like I said before, it was all about that recovery and switching off and getting my body mentally and physically ready for that turn of backstroke in the relay as well. Do you think the, the two I am is, do, do you think you would swim three events moving forward at an international meet like a world's or a com games? Yeah, hundred percent. I'd love to see myself potentially next year if all goes well, um, do the hundred turn it back and turn it. I am as well. And hopefully a relay, you never know what happens there. <laughs> trains try like swap and change all the time. So yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens, but I definitely want that to be in my future program if it can be. Yeah. So, so, uh, you recover for the tuner back, uh, on day seven is the final, um, you're, uh, like you said, you might've had a little added pressure after that hundred to do the double yeah. shoulders hurting. Can you take us there, uh, through that final? Yeah, I think, you know, being a nine-day meet and, you know, having the the finals in the morning, it's that extra bit draining. But oh, I just, I love racing. And it was actually, <laughs> I was so stressed for that turn to backstroke because five, ten, five, ten minutes before I got in, my coach come up to me and was like, oh, just so you know, after your turn to backstroke final, you're also swimming the mixed medley relay. And I was like, sorry? <laughs> I was like, what'd you say? And he was like, you heard me. And I was like, nah, you're joking. And I, I actually didn't believe him. So I went up to Rowan Taylor, our head coach. I was like, is this what the goal is? And he's like, yeah. I went to the right. top. <laughs> I was like, you guys didn't want to tell me this like yesterday. And they're like, oh, we kind of just made our decision this morning. I was like, well, you could have told me like, <laughs> like a little bit earlier. So yeah, I think um, at that point I was just like, oh, well, give it my best. Do what I got to do. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Okay. <laughs> that's yeah. That's a man. That's a lot. That's a lot to take in. So, so then, um, going into your tuner back, I mean, did that almost relieve some pressure just to be like, well, this is so like, I'm doing this double. This is like comedic at this point. So I guess here we go. Yeah, it definitely wasn't comedic, but you know, I felt that way a little bit. <laughs> I was like, all I can do is my best, but I, it's so, I don't know if other athletes are the same, but when you go from 
you know, the hundred and then you add an extra hundred on so you're swimming 200 and then you go back down. It's that little bit better. Cause you're like, Oh, it's easier. So I was actually excited to be in that mixed medley relay and we didn't have any expectations either, but to come away with a bronze in that as well was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I mean, any medal, <laughs> yeah, exactly. especially in, in a surprise event for you, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so, but that, so the 200 back final, uh, do you remember that race better than the hundred? No, no. I like I did. I was in my mind a lot more as in like pacing and cause I try to, you know, go out quite easy and build my way through. So my last 50 is my strongest. And I think I did switch off still. Um, but my body knew what it was doing and knew when I had to crank up the speed and change into those gears. So very much like the hundred where as soon as the gun went, I knew what I was doing and just had to, you know, really tickle the boxes to get me to that wall. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's so then the, uh, the mixed medley, how, how long did you have from the two back final to the mixed medley? I think it was as in the mixed medley relay. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think there was about, I had metal presentation. I swam down 400 meters and then I was back out again. So, cause you have to be in marshalling that 20, 20 minutes before the race. So, right. Yeah. So it was not a huge amount of time, but it was enough to, you know, recover and kind of get my togs dry again and be ready to go. Did, did you get any advice or did you have a strategy going in for competing against the guys? you know, knowing that. (laughs) (laughs) No, I I was fortunate enough that I had Kira Toussaint next to me. Um, and then the other side was Ryan Murphy. And I just, I actually remember this race because I was like, Oh, I just try riders way for as long as I could. And I, there's a photo of us and I've like just pipped him on the start because obviously he's a lot bigger and more powerful. But as soon as we got into the water, I just remember feeling his wash and I was like, there it is. (laughs) Yeah. I was like, I'm already behind, but it's fine. (laughs) (laughs) And so, so like we said, yeah, you, you definitely did your job. Australia wins a bronze. Um, and then, and then it's, I guess it's back to the, back to recovering for your last night. Um, at that point you had won three medals, two of which were gold. Um, you're dealing with this shoulder pain. What, what are those last, you know, 24, 48 hours of the games, like mentally just at taking all of this in good and not as good. Yeah. Um, I would say that, like I, I've said before, I'm quite good at just switching off and forgetting yeah. what's happened, but I knew that that was going to be my last race and you never know if I'm going to make the next Olympics in 2024. So I was like, this could potentially be my first and last Olympics. This could be my first and last event. And it was my actual first final with the four by one um, women's medley So I was super hyped and actually really nervous, probably more so for that than my individual races. Um, But no, it was super cool to be able to like cheer on those other girls um, through to Kate, um, Chelsea and Emma as well. So to turn around and see Kate's reaction was quite spectacular. And I think once I was on the podium, I actually cried a little bit. I was like, this is so cool. Like, I think I'd finally put down those walls and just let everything soak in. I mean, then like, what a, what a moment to end it on that. Re- that relay was so exciting to watch. It was so yeah. cool. As you mentioned on the podium, you kind of, you kind of let, let your doors open, let, let it like, let it kind of all out. Do you feel like it, you really felt it? Do you feel like everything that you accomplished that week really resonated with you anytime after that during the quarantine or, or even now? Even now I, it's not that I'm being arrogant about it, but I'm like, it hasn't sunken in. And I don't know if it's one of those things that'll sink in when I'm retired or, you know, a year down the line or a month down the line, it's, I'm still kind of on that wave. And I think because of all the other stresses in my life at the moment, I haven't really sat back and, you know, it took me a month to actually watch my races back just because of how busy everything was. And I, I couldn't believe it just watching some of those and, you know, you get all tense and excited, but yeah, I still, I still, I can't believe what's happened. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a pretty great accomplishment. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so now you're in this place of, you have a lot of freedom. <laughs> you have, uh, um, you know, like, I guess a, a big choice to make, but uh, again, you've, you've got time to make it. Um, how are you feeling today? Just where you're at with, 
with swimming and, and with that choice right now? Yeah, I'm pretty confident that I know within myself and the support team around me that we will come together to make the right decision. Um, but, you know, if that doesn't end up working out for me, there's always a different program or a different facility I can go to to really help my career because, you know, I've always said I don't want to be that one hit wonder. I want to be, you know, the Emily Seabombs who have stuck around in the sport for so long and become one of those iconic legends in the sport. So it'd be pretty cool to follow in her footsteps and well, at least try to anyways. Those seem like good footsteps to follow in for yeah. sure. Um, well, Kaylee, I really appreciate you taking the time to sit down and chat today. It's, it's been great catching up with you. Um, any parting thoughts for our audience before we sign off today? Oh, just go out there and enjoy yourselves in the pool. And thanks for having me on. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swim podcasts on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.